So you think that vibrato is here, in this part of your body. That's only part of the story. That's one third of the solution. There's two other parts. The first part is, of course, you're oscillating your left hand. But don't get caught up on that. For vibrato engages more parts of your body. For instance, your bow. Needs to be nice, controlled, straight. And you don't want to be... If you cannot bow straight, then you cannot vibrato. Think of the vibrato as like a... I was like dunking. I know I'm not a tall guy, and I'm, but I'm wearing a basketball thing. As dunking for um, basketball players. Think of vibrato as like learning how to dunk. That's just a part of many things that's happening. The run up to the dunk, the getting enough spring, and holding the ball. So when you're vibratoing, okay, I don't play very good basketball, sorry. Your first... Your sound needs to be nice and controlled with your bow. It needs to have a consistent, confident tone. So you must have, of course, your two fingers laying into the bow, a supple wrist. And the tone is nice and strong but there's one other th so that's of course the bow the oscillation of the left hand that's two parts but where's the third part I mentioned concerning vibrato on the cello I'll once again play without vibrato <laughs> Did you notice anything? An eagle eye student would. Now we'll play with vibrato. Think of me as a mag magician. I'm an illusionist, and the illusion is here. Sleight of hand, I'm distracting you, okay? What I want you to see is not what's happening here and not what's happening here, but what's happening here. I'm going to move my leg away and the, the cello will move. In other words, I'm not holding the cello. I'm actually holding with the back of my thumb. And the cello is much more in the air. It's not controlled. So I'm going to move it away completely. So it's over here now. Not holding the cello, and this leg away too. And I'm going to try to play straight. So I'm gripping the neck. And I'm moving the cello around, all that fancy stuff. And you can do that, right? But once I add vibrato to an unstable cello, cello is moving. So the third, in my, my opinion, more important step to vibrato is engaging the instrument. Have, we play a viol de gamba, viol de jambe. So you hold the instrument into the body. I'm going to take my leg and place it now, hugging it. Every time I go into a vibrato, my legs activate, and yours ought to as well. Your legs are going to activate like this, because you have to hold it because it's going to go everywhere. Now, I'm holding it right here. Doesn't matter where you are. See, it's behind, but I'm still holding it. Now, I can be as crazy as I want to be here. And this is an art of playing over the years has been lost. So if you want to do this, take your end pen, remove it, and hold your cello, you know, put your legs together and hold your cello with your legs. 
And when you do this, and you have to really sit on the edge of your seat to do this, you have no choice but to hold the instrument. It's completely engaged in your body. You are now physically holding it. I'm holding it. If I were to loosen the instrument in my leg, the, the cello moves. So I need to hold it. <laughs> I need to hold it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that even though, yes, the oscillation here, the control, the pulling in here is the end result. You don't begin there. You begin by engaging your instrument, pulling it into your body. Second, once you're able to fully engage your instrument, fully control it from moving. And I'm talking, we take your legs, hold your cello. Second thing, what you're going to do is you're going to have, make sure your bow from tip, from tip to talon, you are nice and straight. And when you're ready, play with nice bravado, but only after you engage the instrument against the sternum held by the legs so it doesn't move. Your bow is nice and full, holding down with your two claws on this side, engaging with the supple wrist, and after you have got those things down, then you will be able to play your vibrato much easier. And then you can oscillate and do anything. You can, you can do this with your hand. You can do this with your hand. You can do anything because the cello isn't going to move. So I hope you've learned that part one is just here. That's only one part of the three parts of vibrato. The other two parts, holding the instrument and then bowing with a full confident idea of how to make a tone from tip to talon. It doesn't really have to be straight your bow the whole time, but you must understand that the weight of the arm, everything is engaging sound here, engaging the actual physicality of not moving the instrument here. Because right here, it's like taking a stake and putting it in the ground and then whacking it. Because that's what you're doing. Vibrato is a musical contradiction of itself. You are trying to stay accurate at the same time trying to get out of it. You're adding the oscillation. You're deliberately going in and out of tune, though it's pleasant to the ear. Because this, though it's correct, after a while it gets boring. So, the ear really likes that. When you drop a pebble into water, it ripples. It's nature. 